Bo Gua Gua, who you see on the left, is defending himself against suggestions that he's a spoiled Ferrari driving son of parents who may be paying for his expensive foreign education with tainted money. His comments come in the wake of a corruption controversy that has torpedoed his father's career. Bo Xi Lai was recently sacked as Communist Party chief in Chongqing and kicked out of the powerful Politburo. But the scandal is even more sinister. It also involves the mysterious death of a British. British businessman Neil Haywood from last November. Initially, police said he died of alcohol poisoning. Now they've charged Gu Kai Lai in his murder. Gu is the wife of Bo Xi Lai and also Bo Gua Gua's mother. Well, Bo Gua Gua is currently a student at Harvard University getting his master's degree. He emailed a statement to the school's newspaper, and it said, in part, my tuition and living expenses were funded exclusively by two sources, scholarships and my mother's generosity from the savings she earned from years as a successful lawyer and writer. He also added, I have never driven a Ferrari. Well, let's take a closer look at this statement and also at Bo Gua Gua. Joining us via Skype from Cambridge, Massachusetts is Ben Samuels. He's the president of the Harvard Crimson, which is the university newspaper that printed this statement. Ben, thanks so much for joining us. How exactly did the Crimson manage to get in touch with Bo Gua Gua and convince him to speak out? So it's actually interesting. About two weeks ago, one of our writers... Uh, sent an email to Bo Gua Gua, his um, official Harvard Kennedy School email account. Um, and for about two weeks, he didn't answer. Uh, and then yesterday morning, he sent the writer an email back in reply to that first email from the same Harvard Kennedy School email account saying that he'd you know, like to make this statement uh, and like to talk a little bit about what people have been saying to him in the media. So we went back and forth a bit with him. Uh, and then uh, you know, after he developed the statement, we ran it. Okay, so you finally heard from him. There are reports that he's actually moved out of his apartment in Cambridge and hasn't been seen since. Do you know if he's still in the Boston area, if he's still a student there at Harvard? Uh, so when we called to, just as further confirmation uh, that he was the one, in fact, giving the statement, uh, our writers asked him if he could tell us anything about his location, and he wouldn't. So uh, we're more or less as much in the dark as anyone on that. So your writer was able to speak with him. What else was he able to find out when he actually spoke with him on the telephone? And also, uh, Ben, what do we know about him as a student? Is he active on campus? Do students uh, know about him, or did they even know who he was before this scandal? Uh, so I think it's interesting. Harvard you know, has a lot of very notable people and a lot of, the, a lot of children of very notable people here. Uh, so it's very easy to get by being someone famous or related to someone famous without... Um, anyone ever really knowing that. Uh, and I think that was sort of the case with him, certainly uh, before this scandal came to be. Uh, I don't think, and granted, there's a disconnect between the college and the Kennedy School, um, but certainly there was no, he, he wasn't really in any way well known at the college until all of this erupted. Right. He is in the process of getting a master's at the Kennedy School of Public Policy right. there. What do we know about him as a person and as a student? Have you talked to anyone who knows him well? Um, again, it's been, it's been difficult to get in touch with people who are actually willing to speak about him. Um, we know, uh, you know, obviously we've heard the rumors and reported on the rumors that uh, everyone else has been talking about, but um, by all accounts, he was, you know, he fit in pretty well as a Harvard Kennedy School student, um, and there wasn't anything particularly extraordinary one way or the other. And in his statement to the Crimson, he did make a point of saying that he never drove a Ferrari. And this is coming on the tail of a, an article that was printed a couple of months ago that said that he drove up to the U.S. embassies, uh, the U.S. ambassador's residence in Beijing a couple of years ago in a Ferrari. He was only 22. One or twenty-two at the time, so there was this impression that he was one of uh, the spoiled sons of a princeling in China. Uh, why do you think he felt the need to actually uh, talk about that in his statement to the Crimson? Um, I'm not sure. I think you know. I think you would agree with this that to some extent there's there's a, a symbol of class and a symbol of living beyond your means if you're driving cars like that. Um, and if you look at the purpose of the statement, maybe is trying to clear his name or trying to set the facts straight. That's a rumor that while Minor has a, carries with it a connotation that is negative and like he likely thinks it hurts his reputation. 
So if I had to guess, I'd say that's why mm. he submitted the statement he did. And there's so much interest about this story. There's so many tentacles to it here in Asia, and we're starting to see it there on the campus at Harvard. I understand that traffic is up on the Crimson website. By how much, and, and how much of this is actually coming from outside of the U.S.? Um, so I don't have the outside of the U.S. figures in front of me right now, but I can tell you that in the last two days, um, about 30 or 35 percent of our web traffic is coming from China. Um, in an average day, we, you know, we're in the last two days, we've gotten about 230,000 page views, of which about 110,000 have been to this one story alone. So it's been very, very significant traffic for our website.